Well, greetings, printing enthusiasts. My name is Vicki Soma. This is Teagall 3D. Today's episode, I thought we would talk about filling 3D prints with sand. Now, this is a project I took on for Maker Fair Nova, and I've only done it a handful of times, but I've done it enough to pass along some tips. What I thought I would do is go ahead and go over those tips, and then I thought I would do a tour of my multiple processes in Simplify 3D for this application. Uh, my multiple processes is something I've glazed over the last few videos, so it seems about time to have another video where I go into it in detail. So if it's something you want to learn more, stick around at the end of the video and I will inundate you with information. My main goal with filling things with sand is actually making um, the standing cancer ribbon heavier. Uh, this is something that does well on Etsy and I do get customization requests, you know, different text to wrap around it. It doesn't translate well to outdoor craft fairs because it's so light, it blows over. And I want to keep my printing time short and also you know, minimize my material cost. So it seemed like a good application for filling it with sand. If you have a model that you want to fill with sand, here are a few tips that I want to send your way. Uh, first off, plan ahead for spilling sand. Now, I think you would be hard pressed to be messier than me. I'm pretty messy at it. You may ne not necessarily spill the sand, but plan for it so you know you're not taken off guard. In my case, I mentioned a couple of videos ago that I did my sand experiments on the Wanhill Duplicator i3. One, it is a cheaper printer, and number two, uh, its electronic panel is off to the side of the machine, whereas the Maker Gear M2 has electronic panels right under the bed. So thinking ahead, if I'm pouring sand on my bed and it trickles down, it may be going down into electronics. Now, if I didn't have the Wanhound Duplicator i3, I would hope that I would think ahead and maybe just take a piece of paper and temporarily put it over the, uh, the fan here, you know, just to protect it a little bit. I can't guarantee that I would think ahead with that, but I would hope that I would. Uh, after you uh, complete your sand experiments, this is probably a good time to go ahead and make your monthly visual inspections of your belts and also maybe uh, take the time to lubricate your rails. And that way if you have any rogue pieces of sand, uh, you can take care of it or identify it then. Next up, and this one might be a little common sense, is use dry sand. Um, when we go to the shore, there is a reason that we go and get wet sand when we're making sand castles, and that's because wet sand will stick together. Uh, I bought some uh, high desert play sand from Lowe's, or it might have been Home Depot, one of those uh, big box stores, and it did have some moisture inside the package. So when I first pulled the sand up, its natural inclination was to sort of stick together and to be clumpy. Um, so, you know, if you want to minimize your mess, uh, you definitely want to use dry sand. And not to mention, you probably don't want to be sealing in all that moisture inside your print. All right, with slicing considerations, uh, think ahead about your perimeters. This is probably not the time to experiment with one perimeter vase mode. I don't think you have to go all crazy with it. Um, uh, the prints I've been doing so far is just your standard three perimeters or three outlines. The other thing with slicing considerations is you're going to be thinking ahead of when you want to pour this sand in. And you're going to have to try to find that nice little sweet spot where you have a gap that's uh, wide enough that it's easy to pour the sand in and maybe even fit in a funnel, which um, my last experiment when I had a funnel is too small. The funnel wouldn't fit in. So um, you want to find a gap uh, that's wide enough, but at the same time, when you resume your print and you want that printer to start sealing the sand in with solid layers, you want to make sure it's within the printer's capabilities of bridging or making nice solid layers. So you're really just going to be picking and choosing and getting a feel. You know your printer best, uh, you know your model, so you can find that nice little sweet spot there. And then another uh, slicing consideration is cooling. <laughs> uh, when you pause your print, you're going to uh, pour all that sand in, and ideally you're getting the sand close to the top 
of uh, the print. So when it starts sealing it in, uh, you minimize the amount of shaking that you're going to hear. Uh, you can still hear it. Let me get it close to the mic. Yeah, you can still hear it, but minimize it a little bit. But at the same time, uh, if your cooling fan is on and you have a high level of sand, uh, there is an opportunity for the breeze of your cooling fan to move that sand along. Uh, when I go into detail with my slicing settings, I will show you how you can specify uh, turning off the fan for specific layers. As far as the effectiveness of the sand, there is a weight difference. There is a weight difference. Uh, it's hard to translate that in an exciting manner over video. I uh, have footage of me weighing a non-sand version of the Rock Ledge Mansion and a sand version of the Rock Ledge Mansion. Uh, not sure if that's exciting. So here's some footage of my older son, the biggest uh, 3D printing nerd uh, fan there is. Uh, he has the light version and the, the heavy version, and he is a living scale to show you which one is heavier. Okay guys, I have moved over to my slicing machine and let's go ahead and dig a little bit deeper on how I've sliced the cancer ribbon for the filling of sand. Here I am, I have my uh, model in Simplify 3D and I do have two processes set up. Um, when you're setting up multiple processes, it's just as easy as clicking the add button and it'll copy the settings of your most recent um, process. And then you're able to go in and customize you, the, the settings that you need to do. In this case, I am going to run these as two separate print processes. So I am going to save two separate G code files to my mini SD card. And when I print the cancer ribbon of the WAN HAL, the first one I'll drill down and do large cancer ribbon one, and that will do the first part of the cancer ribbon and they'll stop and wait for me to fill in the sand. And then I will go and start a new print called Cancer Ribbon Large 2 and now I'll go ahead and finish up the piece. The way you tell your processes uh, where they're gonna start and where they're gonna end, that's gonna be in the Advanced tab. So I'll double click here, this is my first process. If I drill over to the end, I hit on Advanced Okay, so here, my layer modifications, uh, I am check the box and I'm saying stop printing at 100 millimeters. So when it's 10 centimeters high, that's where it's going to stop printing. Now, I also t uh, do this time and time again, I do this to death, um, but I use customized starting and ending scripts. And the reason I do that is typically when a print finishes, the ending scripts are uh, turning off uh, your your nozzle, your bed, it's turning off the heat, um, it's probably rehoming accesses, like maybe going back to and rehoming your x-axis and all that. Um, and typically when a print starts, the first thing it's going to do is home the accesses. Uh, when you have a print there, especially one that's tall, you're going to have problems homing the axis. You know, things may collide. So to avoid all that, when I finish my early processes, the print's not done yet, there's still more stuff to do. Uh, what I do under the script's ending script, I, I don't do any of the turning off the heat or rehoming accesses or anything like that. I just turn the printer into relative mode. So when I give it instructions, it's based on where that nozzle is right now. So I don't have to give it exact coordinates. I don't have to think, oh, I'm... I'm printing at the Z level 100 millimeters for my cancer ribbon and I want to go to 110. I don't have to fuss with that or worry with that. I'll just say, hey nozzle, where you're at, I want you to move up 50 millimeters or 10 millimeters in this case. And then finally in my ending script, I'm moving my nozzle along the x-axis for about 30 millimeters. Uh, this actually ended up being a little too close to my cancer ribbon. Uh, so in that case, I just went to my LCD panel in the WANHAL and nudged it over. Now on my layers, uh, you may notice my first layer height is 100%. I used to always calibrate my ZN stop and level my bed. So, you know, I would aim for my first layer to be 0.15 millimeters. Um, so in the case of printing with 0.25 millimeter layers, I would have a first layer height of 60%. 
One thing I've discovered is the math gets a lot easier for multiple processes if everything's at 100%. Uh, the reason is, you know, if I had a 60% first layer, then really that first layer is 0.15 millimeters high plus the 0.25s of all the other layers. And sometimes your first process would be stopping a little short of where you um, specify to be under the advanced tab. And so if I keep everything 100%, I don't have to worry about figuring out how uh, I want to adjust my subsequent processes. I do have a lot of bottom solid layers here. Uh, this is just specific to this model. I think um, typically I would do the three bottom solid layers, and that's what I do with the Rockledge um, paperweight, the Rockledge mansion. Uh, in this case, I always print extra solid layers on the cancer ribbon just to try to give it a little more sturdy base um, so it you know, can balance better. And, of course, my infill is 0% because I want to fill this with sand. And top solid layers, I keep at zero because I want to keep my print open uh, for me to pour the sand in. So what I would do is I, I treat these as two separate prints and I do print on the SD card for the Wanhao. So when I go and slice it, I slice one process at a time. Um, so here I'll select none, hit my first process that I want to do, and then I would save the tool paths for this G-code um, to my SD card. The second process here, um, as I mentioned, the math is a lot easier if when you're doing multiple processes, if you keep your first layer height uh, at 100%. For my bottom solid layers, I do have that set to three. And the reason I want to do that is when that uh, print resumes, when I start that new process for the cancer ribbon, I want it to seal that sand in. I want it to be nice, solid layers there. First layer speed, when you're starting a print, you know, obviously you slow that down. I think you saw in uh, my previous screen that I was originally at 40%. Sometimes I do overkill with patience there. Uh, here, it's not really a first layer, so I tend to set it at 100%. I will say right now that one thing I, I did realize with this um, sand experiment is this is really bridging, and it's not because it's a multiple process, it's not picking up my bridging settings. So one thing I would probably do in the future is hack this. I might change my speed to try to make my, um, to mimic my bridging settings. Probably um, there's a bridging extrusion multiplier is 95% and the bridging speed multiplier is 125. So that's something that I would consider um, changing to see if I can improve the performance of the ceiling layer. Another note, and maybe I can go into this in a little more detail in another video, is RJ Mink just did an awesome video about embedding a really strong Magatron tube into a print, and he does it a different way. He doesn't use the um, multiple processes in Simplify 3D. Instead, he uses the um, he uses this additional terminal commands for post-processing, and he does a search and replace on his G code, where he will find a specific layer and insert in code to tell his print to pause there. Uh, I think an advantage of that is it will pick up your bridging settings. It will notice that that's a bridge. Okie dokie. Uh, infill, at this point in time, I do move it up to 30%. I'm not going to be filling it with sand, and I want my top layers to the top of my cancer ribbon to look nice and clean. Ah, uh, coolie. So here you go. Um, you know, typically when you have a um, first layer, your cooling fan is off. Um, a lot of times I'll turn this back on if I'm just doing color changes. I'll turn this back on for the first layer of subsequent processes. Um, but here, I went ahead and turned it to zero. I was anticipating that my first layer may not be completely solid, completely clean, may not be the best first layer, ceiling layer that there is. So I went ahead and added another set point um, and put in two for the, the layer and zero. Let's remove this here. Let's, I'm going to go ahead and remove it to show you. So what I did was I went ahead and added another set point and I changed the layer to two and I also changed the fan speed to zero, which is off. So this means my cooling fan would be off for the first layer, and it would also be off for the second layer. When it hits the third layer, 
uh, of this is my second process, my sealing process, then I will go ahead and turn that cooling fan back on. Talked about my ending script of the other process, the previous process. All I have to do here on my starting script um, for my second process, my sealing process of the cancer ribbon, is just put my printer back into absolute mode. Last but not least, the advanced tab of my second process. Uh, for layer modifications, I have the start checked and I say, hey, you're going to start printing at the 100 millimeter mark. That's where my other print uh, left off. And stop is unchecked, which means you're going to print until the end. When I'm ready, I will go ahead and slice just my second process. <clears throat> and this is what it's going to look like. So you can see we're going to start with solid layers to seal the sand in and then we'll just go into normal three perimeters and 30% infill and just finish up that ribbon. Well that's today's episode. Thank you for watching. I hope this gives you some ideas of what you can do to weigh your prints down. Uh, if you have any questions or comments or improvements to the process, uh, go ahead and comment down below here at YouTube. You can also reach me at TGAW on Twitter and I have a 3D printing blog which is at www.tgaw.com. Thank you again for watching and have a great day.